Good evening and welcome to our 61st annual Bishop's Company fundraiser. My name is Bishop Andrew Ausbill. For the third year, we have set aside our annual fundraising dinner for a virtual cabaret because of the pandemic. While many of us are returning to a sense of normalcy in our routines, there are others for whom gathering as a large group brings a significant level of concern, and we respect that. It is my hope that the dinner will return in 2023 and that we are able to continue hosting a cabaret that is free and accessible to all, thanks to the generous support of our sponsors. We are happy to return this year with some familiar performers, including pianist Valentin Bogoludov, the Nathan Hiltz Jazz Quintet, and Rachel Coleman, and along with some fresh faces. The set list includes worship and praise music, contemporary and classical favorites, and instrumental and vocal performances that will appeal to the young and the young at heart. Our feature presentation tonight is from the Marian Singers of Greater Toronto. For over 60 years, the Bishop's Company, a fellowship network that was formed to help raise funds for emergency clergy expenses, professional development, and bursaries for theological students, has hosted an annual fundraising dinner. It has proven to be an important fundraising event in the diocese, generating over $4.5 million since inception. Last year's cabaret raised over $110,000 thanks to our sponsors and donations. We are grateful for your support of this ministry. If last year's experience is any indication, we can expect to welcome hundreds of viewers like yourself from across the diocese and beyond to this evening's online fundraiser, an event that is accessible to all for the benefit of our frontline workers in faith. Any gathering in the diocese is an opportunity to express gratitude, offer prayer, and demonstrate our desire to be instruments of God's love, peace, and reconciliation. In this same spirit, we acknowledge that. The land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Anishinaabek nations, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. This territory was the subject of the dish with one spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. This territory is also covered by the Toronto Purchase. Today, Toronto is home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. Let us pray. God of joy, give us your good spirit. God of harmony, let us dance to the rhythms of your world. We praise you with music, song, art, and creativity. Bless our time together this evening. May we enjoy the diversity expressed here and celebrate the richness of talent from across our diocese. We extend gratitude to the performers who will share their gifts with us this evening. We pray for those who cannot be with us, those who are in our prayers, who are suffering, and those for whom this pandemic has been especially difficult. In this challenging time, we ask for your blessing in your name. Amen. As this evening's performance is a fundraiser, I invite you to make a free will offering. Gifts can be received during the performance and afterwards. You can make your gift on a number of platforms. Online at bishopscompanytoronto.ca, by mail, and if you have a smartphone, you can make a, a gift right now. On your screen, you will notice a little square with the diocesan crest in it. It is called a QR or quick response code. Using QR code is quite simple. Open the camera function on your phone and hover it over the code and follow the instructions on your screen. Within a few seconds, an app will appear on your screen. 
open it up, press the make a donation button and you are good to go. The app takes gifts of any size and a charitable receipt will be sent to you by email. If you want to write a check, our mailing address will be posted at the end of this evening's performance. No event runs smoothly without an MC. Tonight, that responsibility is shared by two young people from Grace Church Markham, Ashley Bazzano and Mary Zarifa. Ashley is excited to be part of this event for a second time. She participated as one of the performers in last year's cabaret in the band Water Guns and Daisies. Music has always been something that Ashley has loved, whether it is making it or simply listening to it. She got into learning instruments such as guitar, piano and drums from an early age and loves to sing. Marae has been a part of Grace Church Markham for over two years. She has always loved music, but it was not until she joined Grace Church that she began tapping into her innate musicality. Over to you, Ashley and Marae. Thank you for your introduction, Bishop. It is an honor for us to be with you this evening and to be given the opportunity to introduce many talented performers. So, our first three performances tonight include a jazz ensemble, a youth band, and a keyboard soloist. Nathan Hiltz is a jazz guitarist, composer, and arranger based in Toronto. He has toured and recorded with Melissa Lauren, Tara Hazelton, Jill Barber, Alex Pangman, Laura Hubert, Stephen Tates, Drew Jureka, and many others. He plays traditional jazz with the Nathan Hiltz Trio and the Kaufman Hiltz Quartet. Nathan teaches guitar at Humber College. The Nathan Hiltz Quintet is made up of Tom Moffat on trumpet, Jake Kaufman on alto saxophone, Jacob Gorzaltzen on tenor saxophone, Matt Coldwell on bass, and Nathan Hiltz on guitar. The St. Paul's on the Hill Youth Band met for the first time since the pandemic late last year. Since then, they've been practicing regularly to grow in their skills and learn how to lead worship better for their church. It is currently comprised of four young musicians in grades 10, 11, and 12. Tess Bowman, Rachel Everett, Jamie Bowman, and Dane Sevilla. They've been mentored by St. Paul's youth pastor, Matthew Waterman, and longtime church member and church musician, Phil Yach. Rachel Coleman has been playing music and fostering participation in singing in Anglican congregations in Winnipeg and Toronto for more than a decade. She brings pieces of liturgy and scripture to life in meditative song. Prayer, reflection, and slowing down our souls can be difficult in anxious and fearful days, and her music is an apt response. Thank you. 
This evening's presentation is made possible thanks to generous sponsorship from many of the friends and business associates of the diocese. Their names are acknowledged at the beginning and end of this evening's performance and can be found on the Bishop's Company website and Facebook page. Sponsorship helps cover the cost of promotion, production, recording, and editing. We are so grateful for their generous support. Of course, this evening's presentation is about highlighting talent, music, performance, and theater. Without the enthusiasm of the artists with us tonight, we would not be able to continue the annual tradition of the Bishop's Company to raise funds for the benefit of our clergy. This cabaret is an example of how charities can reinvent themselves during the pandemic, and we are so thankful to each one of you for helping to make this event possible. The Marian Singers began informally in the early 1990s with a core of voices from the Orpheus and St. Clement's choirs to celebrate the wedding of, of Marian Thompson. The continuing bonds of music and friendship have led to the development of a distinctly accomplished choir who's chosen restriction of performing and rehearsing a cappella enables it to meet the ultimate demands on their blend and tonal shades of their collected voices. The resulting fluency and ease within their discipline has yielded an effortless joy of performance in a repertoire spanning the sacred and the secular from the 15th to the 20th century. The Marian Singers is an all-volunteer group performing recitals in and around the Greater Toronto Area, raising funds for various humanitarian non-profit causes from relief work to restoration. We are grateful that they join us tonight to perform three pieces of music. How Can I Keep From Singing with soloist Shelley Kosatz and Jane Milligan, Lullaby with soloist Neil Payne and Dwayne Atkins, and Christopher Dawes on piano, and finally Old MacDonald Had a Farm with soloist Penny Harbin.
course of its 61 years, the Bishop's Company has raised over $4 million from generous Anglicans like yourself. It is a fellowship network that has spawned similar groups across Canada with the same purpose in mind, providing support to those leaders in our family of faith in their time of need. To explain the work of our Bishop's Company and how you can help, I welcome back our Bishop, Andrew. As a first-hand beneficiary of the Bishop's Company, I can attest to the impact that your support has on the lives of clergy. A few years back, I made a personal testimony in front of hundreds of guests at the 54th annual dinner. I spoke of a medical emergency my sister-in-law had following a terrible accident while on holidays in Europe. I was able to be my, by my brother's side through this ordeal thanks to the financial assistance provided by the Bishop's Company. And I am not alone. Each year my colleague bishops and I receive numerous requests for help. Some may be small, like travel assistance to a conference or help with paying for an online theology course. Others not so small. Counseling dental reconstructive surgery, and speech and occupational therapy for children. Most years we get over $100,000 in requests, and most of the time we can do something. In the last number of years, the Bishop's Company has made some notable gifts. Through their capital savings, the company made a $500,000 grant to establish the Bishop's Endowment in the Anglican Diocese of Toronto Foundation. Ten years on, that project is now fully funded. The Office of the Bishop of Toronto is now funded by an endowment, ensuring that our diocese, despite any financial challenges it might face, will perpetually be able to support a bishop. In addition, the Bishop's Company have provided financial support to Indigenous programs and stipendiary assistance for clergy. They provide annual bursaries for theological students and postulants, a purse to clergy widows at Christmas, and provided seed funding for our employees' assistance program. We know there will be more requests this year, and that is why I am asking for your continued support this evening. Donations large and small make all the difference. 
From time to time, I am asked to speak at events beyond the Diocese of Toronto. And recently, I spoke at the 100th anniversary of Trinity All Saints Church in Bala. As a token of thanks to me, they made a donation to the Bishop's Company of our diocese. I was truly moved that they took the time to choose carefully where their gift might have a deep effect. And their gift was to me a symbol of support, love, and care for the clergy of our church. And your gift tonight will have the same effect. Our final act features a returning pianist and a choir and a doo-wop group. Pianist Valentin Bugalubov was born in Latvia where he studied piano, violin, voice and choral conducting. He was awarded first prize at the Latvian Piano Competition and at the Pan-Baltic Piano Competition. After completing his studies at the Moscow Conservatory, he returned to Riga at the Latvian Conservatory to teach piano. Since arriving in Canada, Valentin Bugalubov has given several piano recitals for the CBC in Montreal, Toronto, Moncton, New York, and has recorded several CDs. He's teaching piano, vocal art, and gives master classes throughout Canada. From 2015 onwards, Valentin has been working as an organist and a choir director at Christ Church in Stouffville. The choir at St. John the Baptist Norway under the direction of music director Kara Halpin, is a dynamic group of dedicated parish members, as well as a few professional singers. They participate in joyous weekly rehearsals and lead the congregation in hymns, psalms, as well as contemporary music during the offertory and communion. Our final performance of this evening is from Humble Beginnings, from singing in the choir stalls at the Church of Redeemer in downtown Toronto, to the street corners and backroom dives the Redeemers revived the joy of doo-wop close harmony singing. From the golden days of bluesy pre-rock and roll R&B to present day pop and top 40, this close harmony vocal group celebrates the sounds pioneered by classic groups like the Orioles, the Drifters, and the Flamingos, honed by the Beatles and Stevie Wonder, and reimagined by more contemporary acts like the Backstreet Boys, Gnarls Barkley, and Pharrell. The Redeemers are made up of William Reed, Tara Mitchell, John Cowling, and Bruce Scabuzzo.
Oh, I wonder, wonder, who do ba who who wrote the book of love? Tell me, tell me, tell me, oh, who wrote the book of love? But I got to know the answer was it someone from above? Oh, I wonder, wonder, who ba do ba who who wrote the book of love? Baby, baby, baby. I love you, yes I do. Well, it says so in this book of love. Are the one that's true? Oh, I wonder, wonder who, but do be who, who wrote the book of love? Chapter one says you love her, you love her with all your heart. Chapter two you tell her you never, 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 never gonna part. In chapter three remember meeting a romance. In chapter four you break up. But you give it just one more chance. Oh, I wonder, wonder who, be do be who, who wrote the book of love. Baby, 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 I love you, yes I do. Well, it says so in this book of love. Are you the one that's true? Oh, I wonder, wonder who, be do be who, who wrote the book of love. Chapter one says you love her. You love her with all your heart. Chapter two, you tell her you never, 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 never gonna part. In chapter three, remember the meaning of romance. In chapter four, you break up, but you give it just one more chance. Oh, I wonder, wonder who the do be who who wrote the book of love. Tell me, tell me, tell me, oh, who wrote the book of love? But I got to know the answer. Who wrote the book of love? I wonder who. Yeah. Who wrote the book of love? Going to the chapel and when going to get married. Going to the chapel and when going to get married. Gee, I really love you. Thank all of you for joining this wonderful celebration of music and talent from across the diocese. As you can see, we have tremendous artistic talent in the diocese. 
And it is my hope that this evening has brought you joy and encouragement. While we are unable to be together in person, we can, nonetheless, gather, celebrate, and give to an important diocesan ministry. And because there is a better chance than not that the cabaret will continue next year, I would like to consider how you might contribute a talent or special skill as a performer. Perhaps you have a flair for singing or playing an instrument. Perhaps you are gifted at improv or dance. We would like to hear from you, young or old, as a group or on your own. We are looking for eight new performances for 2023. You can contact Melissa at the email address noted in the closing credits. Finally, I want to thank the staff team from the stewardship office, especially Melissa and Peter, who are the inventive minds behind this event. The cabaret was conceptualized in May of 2020 when it was clear that we were not going to be able to gather for the dinner. As you can see, we have pulled things off for the third year in a row. I'm also thankful for the fantastic emceeing done by Ashley and Murray. Let us pray. God of love, we give you thanks for the wonder and joy of this night. We thank you for the melody and song, movement and story. We are grateful for the work of the Bishop's Company in providing support to the clergy and their families who are in need. And we give thanks for the generosity, witness and support of all who joined us this night. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain amongst you always. Amen.